before we start this edition of Game Show Garbage, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for their well wishes and their support uh, for Game Show Garbage and also the family of Jim Williams, who passed away last week. Um, so I decided to shelve the planned induction. That will happen later on down the road. Uh, but this video that you're about to see right now is going to be done in honor of Jim because before he died and before he had his pancreatitis issues, uh, we really railed against this show. And we went back and forth on whether we should do it for the show, for this channel or not. And I decided in honor of Jim, we will do it. So Jim, this induction is one for you. One's for sure. They both believe Sparks to be a total uh be an exciting contest which shows that divorced couples can still have fun together, right? <laughs> Mythological Hero Achilles. C. On the spot dice spin. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. I want to talk about local game shows for a second. Now pulling off a local game show can be tough, especially with the really small budgets that they have. Sometimes you just get high school quizzers, but on that spectrum you get some really good ones like uh, Matt Onger's uh, Quiz Busters. Often or not, you get the gas money or beer money franchise. And depending on what area of the country you're in, it leads to some impressive and interesting results. Clark is from Des Plaines. He's going to try his hand at Bears Trivia. Here we go, Clark. You ready? Yes. All right. $10 question. In what year did the Bears clinch the NFC North in a Christmas Day game against the Packers? 83. But sometimes you get local variants of a national game show, and it just becomes one big unbridled mess. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. A big umbrella mess out of Philadelphia. Now, when you think of Philadelphia, you think cheesesteaks. You think the Eagles. You think uh, a taking basketball team in the 76ers. But what also needs to be talked about is how awful some of the sports radio show hosts there are, especially Mike Missinelli in particular. And apparently, some people had the bright idea that he'd be a good host for a game show. Oh, and the show sucks, too. So let's talk about the Philadelphia equivalent of Family Feud. Philly Feud. Spelled P-H-E-U-D. Because poor literacy is Q. And the show is anything but. Welcome to Philly Feud. I'm the referee of today's matchup. Let's meet our competition. Here is Team Blue. It's Tiger Jones with the Philadelphia Soul along with Brandon Perkins, Joe Goosby, and Larico Stevenson. They might have a passion, but we got the soul. Philadelphia is known to be a tough city. Let's meet Team Red. Hi, this is Donna Ferry, Chrissy Bell, Megan Lawrence, and Angela Perfetto, and we're the Philly Passion. And you might have the soul, but I guess that makes us the devil because we're going to take over. We're in search for a team that knows the most about Philly. Philly Feud is a Philadelphia-based show that takes Family Feud's format and messes it up to the point where I'd rather watch the first season of YouTube Family Feud. Set in a Chickie and Peace play to interactive sports bar, two teams of four answer local survey questions that hopes to win some Miller Lite swag and gift cards to the bar that they're at right now and also whoever else is sponsoring the show. Look, I know the budget is super tight, but the budget for the set pieces is really poor. Heck, there's some episodes where they just have the face-off podium and that's it. Other shows later on the run at least have podiums for the test instead of, you know, just having chairs. But to be frank, that's the least of the show's problems. To me and Jim, one of the biggest problems the show had was the host. He is currently the voice of 97.5 The Fanatic, and he is known to be an outright douchebag. I present to you Philadelphia's own Mike Missinelli. And now, let's welcome our ringmaster, Mike Missinelli. Hello and welcome to the Philly Feud. We're live from Play 2 Chickens and Pizza South Philly. Let's give it up for our referee Sigourney. Miss 
Cincinnati is a local radio show host in Philly and is known to be quite the agitator to a lot of people. During his day job, he's on record calling former Eagles kicker David Akers a girl and not a real athlete right to his face during an interview because all he was is a kicker. He was fired from working at 610 WIP because he's got an altercation with a producer and allegedly was physically abusive to him. Before Philly Feud made it to air, he was suspended by the Fanatic because of a homophobic email tirade he went on with a listener. And apparently he didn't learn anything from it because when he got back, he opened the show with this, quote, I just got back from a long weekend since the last time I talked to you and that was last Monday. Both me and Jim agreed that Miss Sinelli was a complete dickbag to everybody but refuses to learn from his past mistakes. Miss Sinelli as a game show host is barely tolerable at best. When he isn't as big of a jerkwad as he is on the radio, he hardly has a presence during the game, and that's a problem on a Family Feud variant since it is truly a host-driven show. When he does have a present, it's to basically brag about how his high school team is better than yours, honking chickies and peats, and to basically be unlikable as possible. You figure that with someone as toxic as Miss Nelly is on the radio, he'd at least have a few good zingers in his pocket. But that's not the case at all. So now let's talk about the show itself, and we really need to talk about the hostess, who, if you look at the intro of the show, is not that comfortable at doing this. The show opens with the referee Sigourney McLeaf giving a really robotic introduction, including a really bad Rocky running up the steps montage with her acting skills being Kardashian-esque. You've heard how she sounds when I introduce the show. It's as if her voice could be replaced by a type and speak program and you wouldn't know the difference. There is a second referee in Francesca Ruscio, but I haven't been able to find any footage of her, so I really can't judge her performance. But it really has to be better than McLeaf. So now we get to the actual meat and potatoes of the show. The gameplay. It's a melding of family feud and hot potato, oddly enough. So let me explain. Host Miss Anelli reads a survey question and the top seven answers are on the board. This would be reduced to five in later episodes when the graphics got updated for the entire show. The first person to buzz in gets control, and they will try to list off the answers until the board is filled or they miss, in which case control goes to the other team. They do this until the board is filled or everyone's had to go at the board. Each correct answer is worth 10 points. I guess hot potato comes in when, if you miss, you are knocked out of the round. But the scoring format and everything reminds me of another show. Okay. First one. Mary Lou Retton. Mary Lou Retton. She be. made the list. <laughs> oh dear God, it's the second round of Sex Wars. Now that's another show I really need to get on doing. But back to Philly before I bring up any more shows that I should have done. It's fine, but the Family Feud format is so well known that any deviation is going to be met with sharp criticism. So here's mine. I really don't like the everybody gets a turn mentality. Why not have the first team in control run through, build a pot, and then after each player on the other team misses, the other team comes up with one answer as a unit to steal the pot. You know, like how they do it on Family Feud? But add more drama to the proceedings and put pressure on teams to do well and run the board if they have control. Now after four rounds of this, it's time for the Miller Lightning Round. <laughs> now, you'd think they tried to do something like Feud, a la Bullseye. But they decide to take a left turn at King of Prussia, of all places, and play the $100,000 pyramid instead. In this round, the teams have 60 seconds to try to convey as many Philly-centric people, places, and things as they can. Each correct answer is worth 20 points, and the team with the most points at the end of this round wins the game and gets the Miller Lite swag and Chickies and Peace gift cards and other cards from the sponsors this week. It's an okay round, but I have to be honest, it's one of the most disjointed bonus rounds that I've seen in a long time. It doesn't have any resemblance to the front game whatsoever, except the answers are still about Philly? Honestly, I'd rather have a front game, end game format simpatico and be well executed still trying to force two vastly different formats in one show, a la the match game Hollywood Squares Hour. Now that's another show I need to do. And that is Philly Feud, and after watching a few episodes of the show, it's just bland, it's boring, Miss Nelly is terrible, the referee sounds like she doesn't care, and it's just one big convoluted mess. Like I said earlier, if you want a good local game show, Matt Onger's Quiz Busters is really good. I also heard a show called Scrambled Squares is actually pretty good too. 
Um, I haven't watched it because I'm kind of apathetic to that show anyways. Anyways, that's going to do it for this edition of Game Show Garbage. I'd like to thank everybody for commenting and sending their will wishes to the family of Jim Williams. Jim, we love you. Until next time, bye-bye.